You told me the story of the war, of the ones that survived. And I found you. Your very human brain was miraculously intact. Alita is new here. My God. Let me show you something. It's a bit of lift forgotten. And I'll find out for myself. Face them head on. I'm gonna need you to stand way back. I'm with her. In 2563, three centuries after a devastating war called the Fall, a doctor named Ido visits the scrapyard to find usable parts for his repairs. There, he discovers a broken cyborg girl and notices her brain is still functioning. He takes her home and, with his nurse assistant, gives her a new body. The next morning, the cyborg wakes up in a girl's room, amazed by her new body. After admiring herself in the mirror, she gets dressed and heads downstairs where Ido is tending to other cyborg patients. Ido is happy to see her awake and offers her breakfast, but the girl reveals she doesn't remember how to eat a simple fruit. She has no memories of her past, and Ido hasn't found any records of her either. I don't even know my own name. Let's look at the bright side. Your tears are working. Later, the girl steps outside and sees Iron City for the first time, a lower-class place with Zalem the last sky city, floating above where the elite live. After the war, survivors settled on Earth, working for Zalem, but access to the sky city is forbidden. Ido names her Alita and invites her to stay with him. Ido heads out to run some errands and takes Alita along, giving her the chance to watch a motorball match on a big screen and meet a street dog. Alita also spots a wanted sign offering a bounty for a criminal who killed six women. Suddenly, a massive robot appears in the street and Alita instinctively readies herself for a fight. Hugo, a young man, quickly pushes her out of the way, but Alita rushes back to save the dog. Impressed, Hugo warns her not to mess with the centurions who guard the city. They hit it off, but Ido soon interrupts and takes Alita back home. Later that night, a woman returning to her apartment is suddenly attacked by the wanted murderer. Meanwhile, Alita wakes up to a noise and sees Ido coming home late, carrying a large suitcase and a bloodstain on his hand. The next day, Alita helps Ido with patience and learns about a man who had his cyborg limb stolen by thieves who sell parts on the black market to support motorball games. She also hears that another woman was killed last night. Another girl was murdered last night, right near there. Yeah. And her suspicions about Ido grow when she notices a wound on his wrist. After work, Alita steps outside and encounters Chirin, a mysterious woman with a mark on her forehead. Chirin grabs Alita's hand, startling her, and she runs away. Later, Chirin meets with Ido and reveals they were once married and that Ido used the cyborg body they had made for their deceased daughter to save Alita. Chirin wants to work with Ido again to build a motorball champion that could earn her away to Zalem, but Ido refuses, saying he won't create monsters. Chirin then leaves, and Ido sees her getting into a car with Vector, the man in charge of the factory. Together we can build the finest champions this game has ever seen. I won't help you build monsters. Meanwhile, Alita meets Hugo, who is playing motorball with Tanji and other friends. He agrees to teach her how to play and lends her roller skates, which she practices using. After a few falls, she gets the hang of it and scores a decent number of points. When the game ends, Hugo takes Alita to try chocolate for the first time, and they spot Zappin walking by. Zapin is a hunter warrior who carries a sword since guns are forbidden here. In the following days, Alita continued to work with Ido in the mornings and spent her afternoons with Hugo. One day, Hugo takes Alita to the top of a tall building to give her a view of Zalem and confesses that his dream is to reach it someday. He points out that the scrapyard is full of trash thrown by Zalem, suggesting that if Ido found Alita there, she must originally come from the Sky City. Really cool. Look. That evening, Alita pretends to go to bed, waits for Ido to leave, and then follows him. She catches him stalking a woman named Nishiana into a dark alley and taking a side-shaped weapon from a suitcase. Thinking he's about to kill Nishiana, Alita tries to stop him, revealing their location. It turns out Ido is a hunter-warrior who hunts criminals for their bounties, and this is a trap set by Grushka. Nishiana and Romo are his cyborg subordinates, equipped with advanced parts. Ido attacks Romo and cuts off his arm, 
but Romo and Nishiana team up and overpower him. Alita, desperate to help, jumps in and easily overpowers Romo, almost as if she were built for it. While Grushka keeps Ito from joining, Alita defeats Nishiana too. Shocked, Grushka fights Alita, and as she prepares a special kick, a flashback hits her. She suddenly sees herself on the moon, wearing special armor, in the heat of a fierce battle, where a woman named Gelda calls her 99. In the present, Alita kicks Grushka's arm off and tries attacking him with Ido's scythe, forcing Grushka to escape through a hole in the ground. Later, Ito stops by the Hunter Warriors headquarters to turn in Nishiana and collect a reward, which helps him keep his clinic running to assist others. Alita shares her memories with Ito and insists on learning more. So, Ito takes her home and explains that he made that body for his daughter Alita, who had been in a wheelchair. This was your daughter. You built this body for her. Her name was Alita. One day, a drug-addicted patient stormed into the clinic looking for medicine to use as a stimulant for a motorball match. When he didn't find any, he killed Alita. Heartbroken, Chirin couldn't cope and left. Ito sought revenge, hunted down the man, and discovered he had a talent for this work, which led him to become a hunter-warrior. Ito gave Alita the body he had built, but her brain and core are her original ones, powered by an antimatter micro-reactor, meaning she could power the entire city alone. This technology hasn't been made since before the fall, making Alita over 300 years old. You have a heart strong enough to power all of Iron City for years. So I'm 300 years old. Sweetheart, you are. Meanwhile, Grushka returns to Chirin and reports Alita's skills. Chirin agrees to repair him, and Vector arrives to question him, but Grushka's personality suddenly shifts. Nova, Zalem's overlord, can communicate with people on Earth by hacking into any cyborg he chooses. Nova explains that Alita knows Panzerkunt's fighting techniques, so he orders Chirin to rebuild Grushka and send him to kill Alita. Then, Nova takes over Vector and offers Chirin a chance to go to Zalem if she agrees to work for him. Meanwhile, Ido searches the bounty list and finds that Grushka isn't listed, suggesting someone is protecting him. Alita decides to become a hunter warrior, but Ido forbids it. Angry, Alita leaves and meets Hugo, who takes her to a motorball match. After watching the intense fights, Hugo uses his connections to show Alita the behind the scenes, explaining that the motorball champion wins a trip to Zalem. Alita spots Chirin and Vector, who create cyborgs specifically for motorball. The current winner isn't one of their creations, so Chirin asks Vector to get his parts. Moments later, the winner celebrates his victory only to be attacked by a group of jackers who trap him in a ring of fire. They capture him, load him into a van, and take his arms, which Vector later buys for Chirin. At this point, it's revealed that the jackers are Hugo and his friends, doing this for money. Vector orders them to deliver the arms, planning to kill what remains of the winter himself. The next day, Hugo and his friends take Alida to see the beautiful natural landscape outside the city. In a lake, they find a war-damaged ship. Some scrappers had taken various parts from it, but most of the ship was left untouched because it's advanced enemy technology from the United Republics of Mars. Hugo thinks this may help Alita recover her memories, so she dives into the lake without hesitation, able to breathe while walking underwater. She enters the ship and opens a strange door, revealing a mysterious force field. Recognizing the setup, Alita summons the control panel and deactivates the shield, exposing an advanced armored body. She brings it back home, feeling a strong connection to it. Alita asks Ido to let her use the body, but he refuses. He explains that this is a berserker, a weaponized cyborg body skilled in Panzerkunst. The ship responded to her because she was created as a weapon, and Ido doesn't want her to become one again. He wants her to have a chance at a normal life. It has the power I need. It's not who you are now. No. You've always known. Alita ignores Ido's worries and heads to the headquarters to register as a hunter warrior. Then, she asks Hugo to take her to the bar where hunter warriors gather. The dog from the other day joins them. Inside the bar, Zappin mocks Alita for being a little girl and shows off the power of other warriors, like McTeague and his cyborg hounds. Alita brushes off his taunts and speaks to everyone in the bar, urging them to team up to hunt Grushka 
and defeat anyone protecting him. The crowd finds her idea laughable, and Zappin mocks her again. Alita fires back, provoking Zappin to attack her, but she quickly beats him up. Afterward, Alita calls everyone pathetic and proposes a deal. If she can defeat them, they must agree to join her. A bar fight breaks out, and McTeague watches with amusement as Alita defeats everyone with ease, with some help from Hugo. Ito arrives, halting the fight by threatening to charge everyone for repairs. While Ito scolds Alita for her choices, Grushka appears and kills a man to show off his upgrades. Grushka demands Alita, and when the dog tries to defend her, he kills it. Alita, furious, paints warrior marks on her face with the dog's blood and charges at Grushka. Ito tries to help, but Hugo quickly pulls him back. Grushka opens a hole in the ground, drawing Alita down to battle in the ruins of the old world. Alita fights impressively, but Grushka's upgrades let him wound her leg. He then reveals that Nova created her, just like him, leaving Alita emotionally shaken. As Grushka attacks again, she fails to dodge and loses most of her body. This brings back a memory of Gelda teaching her to fight, urging her never to give up, as they must defeat Nova soon. Motivated by Gelda's words, Alita uses her remaining arm to bounce and drive a punch through Grushka's eye socket. She collapses just as Ito and Hugo arrive to fight Grushka. McTeague soon joins, sending his cyborg hounds to avenge the dog, scaring Grushka into retreating. Ito brings Alita's remains home and repairs her, giving her the berserker body, which immediately adapts. The next morning, Alita feels stronger than ever and discovers her fingers can generate plasma. Later, Alita meets Hugo and tells him the nanotech enhances her touch sensitivity. Hugo touches her arms and face, allowing her to feel genuine human contact. They share a kiss. Meanwhile, Grushka, furious over his loss, faces Nova, who takes over Vector's body to scold him and remind him of his mission. After Nova leaves, Vector decides Grushka can't handle this mission alone. I need you to destroy this Alita. I need you to bring me her heart. So he plans to meet with Hugo to get information about Alita by getting him drunk. The next day, Alita finds a hungover Hugo in his apartment. They talk about his dream of reaching Zalem, and she offers him money to make it happen. She plans to collect bounties to buy a ticket from Vector. Hugo doesn't want her risking herself again, but she insists she would do anything for him, even offering him her heart. She removes it from her chest to prove her point, but Hugo refuses and tells her that Vector wants her to compete in motorball. Alita agrees to play, as long as Hugo becomes her coach so they can go to Zalem together if she wins. That night, Zapan watches from a distance as Alita prepares for her first big game, with Ido giving her extra foot traction and custom-made skate feet. Alita chooses the number 99 to honor her memories. Meanwhile, Vector contacts the other players and offers a huge reward for anyone who kills Alita during the match. On the streets, Hugo finds Tanji and the others taking parts from a cyborg. He announces he wants to quit this business, which sparks a fight between him and Tanji. Zapin suddenly interrupts, killing the Jack cyborg to make it look like the Jackers did it. He then attacks Hugo, wounding his shoulder. Tanji tries to save his friend, but Zapin quickly kills him with his sword. Hugo seizes the chance to distract Zapin with a Molotov bomb and runs away, but Zapin chases after him. At the stadium, Vector tells Chirin that he made Hugo bring Alita to them by promising to take him to Zalem. Ito realizes that Alita's opponents aren't normal players. They are all bounty hunters, which means this is a trap. He warns Alita through her communicator, but she chooses to stay and fight. The tough opponents land a few hits on her, but Alita quickly overpowers them. Suddenly, she receives a call from Hugo, who asks for help to defeat Zapin. Alita jumps through the stadium's big screen to leave the building and the other players follow her. With more space to move, Alita easily defeats them and rushes to find Hugo, who is about to be killed by Zappin. Alita pushes Zappin away, but just then, the bounty screen shows that Hugo is wanted for murder. Hugo admits he was a jacker, but insists he only took parts without killing anyone. Zappin reminds Alita of the hunter's code, but Alita can't bring herself to kill the man she loves, so Zappin stabs Hugo first. A centurion arrives to claim Hugo's body, so Alita picks him up and runs to a secret spot. Hugo swears he didn't kill anyone and explains he quit his job for Alita. They kiss and confess their love for each other. 
Chiron watches from a distance and feels touched by their relationship. When Vector calls her, she tells him she lost track of Alita and Hugo and offers her help to save Hugo. Moments later, Alita emerges with Hugo's head in her arms. The Centurion accepts this as proof that Alita has finished the bounty. But Zapin takes a closer look and discovers that Chiron has connected Hugo's brain to Alita's core. Zapin, furious, tries to attack Alita, but fighting other hunters breaks the code, so the Centurion classifies him as a criminal. Stealing another's bounty is against factory law and a hunter's code. This allows Alita to smash Zapin's face and take his sword. Hours later, Ito finishes giving Hugo a new body, even if it's basic. Ito tells Alita that Vector's promises were fake and explains that the only way to reach Zelum is by becoming the champion. He knows this because he and Chirin are from Zelum. Nova forced them to come here. And when Ito saw their daughter was imperfect, he removed the mark from his forehead to leave that life behind. I'm final champion. You can't buy your way up there. But how do you know that for sure? I've removed it myself. Mark of Zalim. Meanwhile, Vector confronts Chirin for letting Alita go. Chirin explains that Alita reminded her of her duties as a doctor and mother, which makes her want to quit because she no longer cares about Zelum. With no choice, Vector sends a guard after her. Determined to get revenge for Hugo, Alita heads to the Hunter Warriors headquarters in the Cyborg Factory. Using Zappin's sword, Alita destroys all the Centurions in the bounty system before bursting into Vector's office. There, she discovers that Vector has taken Chiron's body parts to sell. She becomes so distracted that she doesn't notice Grushka arrive and gets hurt on her hip, triggering another flashback. During the war, Alita and Gelda, along with their team, try to reach Zelum by climbing the cargo tubes. A serrated defense ring appears on the tube, killing the army and leaving only Alita and Gelda behind before it breaks the tube in two. Alita barely manages to hang on, and Gelda helps her back up, reminding her that their mission is to destroy Zelum. Inspired by Gelda's words, Alita tells her body to heal itself, and then kills Grushka in just a few moves. Afterward, Alita demands to speak to Nova. Nova takes over Vector's body to respond and reminds Alita that he can see everything. He threatens to kill Ito and Hugo, which makes Alita furious, and she kills Vector to silence him. At that moment, Ito calls Alita to inform her that Hugo had to run away because the Centurions are after him. Alita searches for Hugo and finds him climbing the tube to reach his dream. No matter how much she explains that Nova is using him to get to her, Hugo doesn't listen, and Nova seizes the chance to drop a serrated ring on them. Alita dodges it, but Hugo gets hit and loses most of his body. With a quick jump, Alita grabs Hugo's hand to stop him from falling, but his arm begins to slowly come apart. The couple shares their loved one last time before the arm breaks and Hugo falls to his death. Months later, Alita has become a motorball superstar. During a match, she raises her sword to point at Zelum as a promise to become champion and find Nova to get her revenge. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.